Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of the Banner Saga 2 here on at your professional walkthroughs channel with me your host Max. On this episode we will once again continue with Rook's party and we are still in that town which name I will probably be capable of pronouncing. Take a look at least at the map to see if I will be able to find it and pronounce it because yeah I, I just don't remember uh Mund? is that it man maybe his icon is covering the rest of the name who knows lundor okay at the north end of the old wood a small town catches and breeds birds with the king's permission the feathers here are often prized for arrows, which many hunters swear fly straighter and swifter than any other. Okay, cool. So, wonder. So, let's take a look at what does the newly established mayor has to say, and what does one of those ponies has to tell us too. Yo, sir. So that's it. You're just going to leave us to fend for ourselves. Brooke, you know we're heading to Orberang. I've been very clear about that. But what if those dredge return or those flea-ridden horseborn? Ivor, I'm not sure about the horseborn. But you can count on more dredge. But why? Why are they after Lundor? I don't really know. They're running from something same as us. We don't have time to... Dis yeah, let's go with this. But you're running from them. What are they running from? That's what you, we all like to know. Yester's eye dart around for a moment. Does that mean you'll take us with you? You think about what he's asking. Are you ready to sue your banner into ours? We can't support this many people. All of you, how many are there? Well, let me think. We've got about 50 fighters. That's how many we tucked away inside the great hall you saved. I think that about sums it up. What do you say? Yo, sure. Consider it own. The people of Lundar that mean something and you'll keep them alive better than I ever could. Great. Then that's settled. Yes, sir, what can you tell us about the old wood? It's... is where you're headed? With this many? When he sees you nod, he lips, purse, and move from side to side. Yes, sir, well, strange things happen in that place. It's a place where people go missing or come back happier than ever. Brooke, is it dangerous? Yes, sir. You charged into a town under attack by a horseborn and dredge. I'm not sure what you consider dangerous. Ivor, I guess that means we'll find out. You agree and call for everyone to move out. I just hope we're gonna get some provisions as well with those fighters, because honestly, goddamn. Rich looks nervous as you approach. You choose your words carefully, remembering to talk slowly. Why did you attack, attack the other horseboard? You're going to join us. You have to follow orders. I want to know about you and Durdu. Go with this. Durdu. He whips his tail and stands taller, prouder. Durdu. Mate. Me. Hers. Hers. Mine. When food much, again, strong, young, for Darju and me. But Eve looks at you with arch eyebrow. Confident man wanting to provide for family. There's something attractive about that. You clear your throat and look back at Roach. Um, let's go with this. His eyes dart around. And he repeats your word silently, slowly before preparing his response. Other like me, wrong. Friend, no. You look at Adiv to see 
if she understands, but she only shakes her head a bit. Fight, friend, no, other, wrong. Adif, you fought them because they're not your friends? Red squints while studying Adif's mouth moving. Friend, no. Okay, let's go with the last one. He doesn't seem to understand your words, but your tone makes him step back a pace. Adif, you are not in trouble, but we are a herd. Rook is our leader. Adif points to you and speaks slowly. We follow orders from leader. You follow orders from leader. You cannot be sure how much Rutch understands, but his jaw clenches and he stands straighter. He snorts and kicks up dirt with a hoof. Doesn't seem to like that, does he? No, but he'll learn to appreciate it, says Adif. You choose your words carefully and that's it. Brook, I'm glad I had a chance to talk to you. Bright simply stares at you. Everyone feels awkward at the inability to communicate. So you smile at him. Thank you. Thank. He taps a hoof on the ground a few times before trotting off. Adif, my best guess is there are different herds like our clan, but they don't really get along. Brook, maybe his herd attacking Lundar was just a particular enemy. Adif, maybe. He smiles and leaves you to your confusion. Seriously, we need to get some freaking provisions because we have way too many mounts to. I'm not even kidding about this, people. We have 5 days worth of provisions, we have 45 points of renown, uh, our heroes are all over the place, we're gonna have to try to switch around our party composition, kind of running around with just uh, Varls in our party. So we will see how this works out when we eventually venture out and leave the town. I really did not want it to camp even more just due to the fact that we have only 5 days worth of supplies. Unless our clan people decide to scavenge throughout their way in the woods or something, I'm not really sure what are our chances. So on one hand, we can have a really good morale, but on the other hand, if we don't have food, people will be leaving. It's those crags when a scout cries out. That's who's tracking us. The woman is limping. A rough horn arrow jutting from her leg. Horns blown from the front and back of the caravan. Two attacks at once. Akon's shieldmaster Morg overhears this and says wolves on the north hunt like this. You just pull in and protect all sides until they make a mistake. Then you make it costly for them, he shrugs. You move a bit slower, though. You decide what to do. Slow down and tighten the caravan ranks. Focus on the attackers and focus on the attackers behind you. And fighters to both ends to repel the attack. Let's go with the slower approach. It's a game of patience now, the Varl said. If they stick with us, they'll expose themselves and we'll hit them hard. The Cragsmen kill a few of your fighters and steal some food. You hear them laughing and pitying you as they disappear into the countryside. I'm more pissed off about the damn provisions, to be perfectly honest. I can live with losing some people. We have managed to forge at least something, and when we move into the woods, it will be much more difficult for them to hopefully try to ambush us, although that's highly questionable. Whispers from the clansmen grow in volume with every step towards the carefully daunting old wood. Nothing but game trails into this place, Iverson. For this many people, I don't like it, he looks 
agitated, nervous. Glancing around, you notice the other Varl, and even the Horseborn acting similarly. Tight places like this don't sit well with us, he says, watching me. No room to stand or swing, just another place I belong. Ivor's growing concern with feeling useless is somewhat puzzling, but you keep it to yourself, for all its majesty and story past filled with legendary hunts, the dense foliage and spore-filled air of the old boat feels airy. We are burning through those damn guys, man. Let's see if something will trigger. Achilleries are not strange in the old wood, but the discovery of a blue tinged campfire in the distance creates quite a stir amongst the clansmen. The Varl ignore it completely, but fighters and families alike want a closer look um call everyone keep moving ursa have you ever seen anything like this the archer's eyes are wide and they dart around to various branches in the trees maybe she says best to move along let's call everyone back no telling who or what's out there, you say. But stay together and keep moving. By the looks on their faces, you clearly dashed a few dreams, but the clansmen all return. There seems to be something. Is that a town? Etting Bear? Well, how the hell am I supposed to pronounce this? A woman hauls a young girl in front of you and a crowd of other. Caught her stealing enough food to feed a starving Varl. The woman says, Not the first time I've seen her at it either. The girl looks familiar. She's part of the thin group of humans you picked up on the trail. Why were you stealing? I won't have thieves with us. You and your family have to leave. Just return the food, her people will punish her. Let's go with this. Never know when you'll get rid of us, the girl says. People always get rid of us. Her mother bursts through the crowd, stupid girl. Those people were good to us, she says. But it's too late, drifters. Come, the angry... The angry shouts from the clansmen. Drifters are people without a banner. They are... Blamed for all sorts of woes, mostly undeserved. The Varl and clansmen alike run them off before you can make sense of it all. But you are left wondering what will become of them. Etin... Etin... Bird? I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. A sudden rumble underfoot is strong enough to make you grab the side of a cart for balance. After it ends, you notice a young girl crying when her brother puts an arm around her. That's just the way it is around here, he says. Nothing to cry about. Deef looks concerned. I'm not sure if that's the right attitude or not, she says. It keeps them from worrying all the time. But it keeps them from being cautious too. Ivor, what's the point in caution, Ivers? Look around. If it's that massive serpent causing these quakes, it could be an arrow's range away. And we'd never know it. For all these trees, his words do little to quash the acrid dread in your gut. I really hope we're gonna be able to grab some provisions here. Why is there a village so close in the woods to the other town? The faint smell of smoke goes unnoticed by many except you and few others including the horseborn. It's coming from the south, Ivor says. Ettingberg, if the map is right, it'll take us some time to get there. 
Ratch and Dadri are unleashing strings of angry sounds and pointing to hoof prints leading south through the woods. Clansmen watch them with concern. You consider what to do. We can't save everyone. What are the horseborn doing? Let's see if we can help. Yeah, let's go and help. While she doesn't understand your words, your movement towards the village prompts Deidreu to move forward quickly. Only Roaj is able to slow her and keep her near the caravan. Your arrival through the smoke is unexpected by the hoofed villagers. Some unite to hold you off, while others, smarter in blue war paint, flee into the surrounding woods. Damn it, are we gonna fight? I hate fighting the god. Damn. Ah, oh, ponies. They are such a pain in the ass. Yeah, it, it's most likely we might lose this. Like, that series. Oh, man. I want to go with definitely at least, like, one freaking Barl. Who will protect our archers. Uh, we have some mobile units here, so that something although not really sure how much of a help will they be in engagement if we are dealing just with firstborn because if you have been able to see some previous episodes you do know that they are utilizing the hit and run tactics and this is a big boy god damn it look at this guy he's like twice the size of the others I get he's I think he's not on the straw diet or like I don't know what the hell is going on. Okay, so tactic number one is to move around our 40 at level 8. Question is I should be able to approach this Forceborn, attack it, and then retreat back. Now it's left with only four points of strength. I'm not really sure if she will be able to attack at this range. Continue to do this hit and run. Try to deal as much damage as we can. Ah! I'm move the thief closer and. Let's see if we're gonna trigger one of the enemies to move forward. You never know. We're gonna have to pull her back because she's taking some stupid amount of damage. Birds of prey, let's go attack. I'm really guaranteed someone will trigger the ability here. So Adif is now super close to born, which I do not like. Do some damage here. Our portal is a big guy, he should be able to take the damage. Uh, the problem is I cannot move in here to attack her because I would trigger the rain of arrows. I'm gonna actually move here. Attack. I'm gonna move in front of the D in order to protect her. Beautiful resist thanks to the high armor. Ah, he triggered it. Good. Good. Oh, uh, can you attack this horseborn fortune? No, you have to count. That's another achievement. Awesome. I'm gonna move him here just so that we have two of them in front of a deep and she can be protected. 
However, what I need to keep an eye out is the fact that uh, our Varl is being grounded. I'm gonna take away some of that armor on the big Horseborn. Really not sure what is his capability of dealing damage with 17 points of strength, but I'm quite sure it can be really, really, really annoying. If we can do something to her. Really hoping I'm gonna be able to finish off one of these platforms soon. There's just way too many of them still moving around the map and I don't feel comfortable with their hit and run tactics. Let's reduce that armor. I'm really terrified of what he will be able to do when it comes to damaging my units. Because with one point of strength, I'm not really capable to do that much. I might be able to pull off a kill here. Yeah, but also this might happen. Still has nine points of armor. On the That's a good girl. Damn it, they are getting reinforcements. A lot of reinforcements. That's why I hate dealing with force points. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Use the armor by half. Not really sure what are the chances she's gonna survive. Her Voral can move in here. Uh, no, don't you dare end the damn turn. That would have sucked so badly. Nine points of strength removed from pool. Yeah, he is dead. There's argument about that, but we can do hopefully some damage here. Seriously? Nothing. Suck. We resisted a lot of these attacks so far, but I'm not really sure how much longer will he be able to tank it. She is gonna die. as much oh uh, you know what what are the freaking it's gonna be his turn I'm really hoping he's gonna move through here and trigger the damn event or the ability which has almost killed him awesome let's see how much damage can deal to this pony points of strength. We don't want to waste too much time dealing with the stupid armor. Come on, let's take out the big boy. Damn it! One more point would be really useful for this. We're gonna have to somehow protect the thief or we are screwed. I was really afraid of that. Remove the armor so when Voral's turn will go, he might be able to kill the ranged pony. Okay, so that's the big guy out of the picture. And I think that was really necessary to be done. Okay, so looks like we have some promotion. We have received gold bridle. Little is known about this ancient piece of riding equipment. And of course they're gonna remove it because I'm in the middle of reading it. You son of a biscuit. Okay, so we have a bunch of injuries here. Both points of renown. That is awesome. 
We do have Renown to promote our units, but what I'm really hoping to get is to move into the damn village, be able to access the market and restock on supplies. With the Marauding Horseborn defeated, the Varl and Clansmen quickly closed the fires around the village. We can never repay you, the village leader states, but we will spread word of what you did here today across the woods and hills. The governor looks at you from a distance and nods. If the governor doesn't want to walk alone home, he's gonna shut the hell up. I'll tell you that right now. We need to get as many provisions as possible. We have basically taken all these supplies from the town. Wow, they actually have this thing, but this is a really cool trinket. I really want this. We have it in the other party, and it's really nice. So why not? Uh, also, it only requires like level five hero, and we have a whole lot of those. So. Okay, now we have seven days worth of supplies. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the injuries. Thinking about like two days worth of healing. It's gonna boost our morale. We're back to five days worth of supplies. Fortunately, I really doubt that they're gonna get any more provisions here, so that sucks. Let's see if we should promote just about anyone. Rook is always a good option to theoretically consider promoting. Call to arms. The peal of Rook's warhorn rallies the heroes and calls them to pillage. During pillage, there are no more guaranteed turns. Killing an enemy gives the heroes two turns to row. Okay, it's... Oh, hold on. I can actually choose an ability. There is another ability. There is no other ability. Why are you telling me to choose an ability? Okay, screw it. Let, let's just go with it. And... But let's upgrade your arm. You can go even higher. Seriously. Yeah, I feel like getting you to at least level... This one would be okay, and let's take a look at the freaking gold brittle. Little is known about this ancient piece of riding equipment, but it was found amidst the wreckage of a raised horseborn camp. Wait, did the big guy freaking join us, or what the hell is like going on? Why, why is it still like equipped to him? And I don't see him in the party of all the people. Uh, the ponies and the varl. Oh man. Go and vote. Alice. Okay. I'm gonna take a look at promoting some of these other people because. Uh, to be exactly honest, I never had this many people to choose from in the first game. And when something happened to, like, Rook, Eve, or someone else, the rest of the party was just totally boned by this, you know? So I wasn't able to, like, get the others to such a high level because of the lack of renown. And so I'm really trying to, like, uh, switch things around here. You up the yeah, to keep your stats here and survivability effect. Uh, a deep, a deep, a deep darling. Oh uh, man, I'll probably hold you to level five for now. Really don't feel that much okay having these three in the party. I'd rather have Borrow or something else, but it will really depend. I really think we should have one more question, but I really don't want to waste any provisions. I feel like once we leave the damn village, as soon as we do so, uh, we are gonna lose some provisions just 
people being dumb and uh, going through our food. Now, question is, uh, are we going through the woods directly to our brain? So theoretically, we might stop by at Toler, or Tolier, or what am I supposed to pronounce this? And then maybe go through the field gate, but that's highly questionable. Really terrified uh, of, like, having to go through these damn woods, ending up somewhere in this fishing village, and then going to the Arbrang. I mean, the whole point from start of game was that from Borgsgard, where we defeated Bellower, we were supposed to take the damn ships and just go down the river, but that all went to something something dark side over here, and that that's why we are in this mess, so and I'm gonna probably just leave the village, because I'm really sure that as soon as we do that, uh, we're gonna lose out on more provisions. We are going up the hill, which is really not the most optimal thing as well. Yeah, immediately, round was down, food is down. Please tell me that in these rich woods, the people can actually scavenge something. The caravan comes to a halt. In front of you stands a single cragsman. We've watched you. You figured that right, he says. Every clansman is wide-eyed and looking around for an attack. Well done, Cragsman says. You listen to your scouts and know how to defend yourself. He clamps a few times. He claps a few times. A good number of fighters are with me. We'd like to join you, right? Whenever you're going is better than returning home for us. You're welcome to join us, but there's better be no trouble, and if I say no... Uh, don't do that, he says plainly. Uh, it's best if you move on. Cragsmen sigh and signals. Arrows fly through the air and clansmen scream. Your fighters follow you into a charge. Sorry, but I'm not taking them in. They've been harassing us, our food and stuff. There ain't a chance I'm taking these guys. Um, I want to take someone instead of the damn horses, just so that we can level up uh, some of the other heroes as well. So let's go with, uh, yeah, I really hate Ursa because she was in the first Banner Saga and she kind of disappeared and I really don't like, want to rely on her. Eve is amazing, Nid is amazing, we have some mobility with uh, Hogan, and the three Varl should dish out such a punishment that they should not consider pulling such a dumb stuff again, hopefully. I'm gonna actually promote Gress here, and the main reason behind me doing that is simple. I want to equip him with the damn thing. Uh, uh, yes, please. Theoretically, I could have gone also with the red-haired Varl to be upgraded to, at least to, like, uh, level 4. Okay, oh, man. I want to move the girls into like a central position so let's take a look at it from a wider range uh, we have three in this corner two here one and two overall three ranged enemy attackers and no, it's one, two, three, and four ranged attackers. One, two, three, mainly the bad ones. Oh, da, 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 da. Let's just rest up here and let them come closer to us if possible. 
Okay, she's gonna light up the world. Thankfully, did manage to resist this and to go trick. Uh, the Voro hate fire, so that is something to find. We're gonna move you here so that they cannot approach or move in against our archers. That would be just the worst. You know what? Let's just go for the strength, ignore the armor if we can. Most likely. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought is gonna happen. Remove the armor from the archer, and if the Boro will eventually have his turn, should be able to pull off quite an attack. Of course, you are really annoying with attacking my archers before I have a chance of utilizing them. Not really sure where did she manage to shoot the damn thing. I'm not sure where that arrow will land. You are super annoying by attacking the archer. No, that really don't need the ladies to do. Okay, let's go with the ability and squeeze the life out of this guy. He's moving around, so this is putting the world into any inconvenient placement. Um, where to attack, huh? Damn it, deflected. That's one of the archers gone. We are really annoying by targeting the ladies. I really don't need them to be injured, I need them to be a functional part of engagement. Okay, so the arrow landed into the middle of nowhere. Let's see how you like them after. It's most of uh, his armor gone. and everything. Eve has not been targeted thankfully. Oh man. I feel some damage here. I'm just afraid that they're gonna approach her now or she's gonna try to shoot her. Which is like the worst case scenario. We're gonna lock them in here and we're gonna go after the archer. Because his turn has passed already, so it's gonna take some time before he can go again. We're gonna knock out the spearman. And now the question is uh, whom to attack? can like utilize the ability in case he would like to move through here. You know what I'm gonna actually do it here and in case he will try to move to the thief at least he might get killed by doing so. Some of the armor. 
He can now kill her, that's really obvious. I'm not really sure why they did not do that. Why are you skipping turns? It's also kind of an uh, important question. Try to get rid of her. Another kill for a thief. Unfortunately, Nid did get injured, so that sucks. Grace got promoted, but also injured. Motion for Hogan too. Yeah, this this sucks. Donald was injured as well, and Grace was too. But nine points of renown should earn us the capability to promote someone else or buy further provisions. We have only four days worth of supplies and I'm not sure if we're gonna come across any village soon. Looks like there's a camp here. Right? Is it just me? You duck under more branches and suddenly find yourself in the clearing of a proper village. The few people you see tend to scatter as you approach and only the water and birds make any noise. Finally, a man approaches in robes so badly torn it borders on embarrassing. His arms are covered in scratches which are freely bleeding. Uh, peasant. Welcome, friends. We don't get many visitors here, but welcome. Welcome. Everything alright here? Yes, everything is fine. An awkward silence hangs in the air. Ivor, fine, I'll say it. You look like you fought a bear and lost. Peasant. Oh, you normally insult those who offer you a place to rest? Brooke, what happened to you? Peasant. Daily chores. The woods keep us busy and are unforgiving if you're not paying attention. Ivor, so it was a beast? Rambles. What? Ivor gives you a skeptical look but says nothing. Please make yourself at home. We have good food and strong drink, enough for everyone. And begins walking away. Wait, what's your name? He smiles again. We have no names here. We simply are. With that, he shuffles away. Yeah, that, that's just weird. Well, hopefully we are able to purchase visions for the town. Or something. Looking. Damn, look at the stats on this one. We don't have the renown, unfortunately. We have seven days worth of renown. Uh, we have some injuries here. We really need to rest up for a day at least. Uh, the morale is going down, so definitely rest up for a day. Try as you might, you cannot sleep. It is the sounds of the old wood. Sit up and find an older woman peering in through the window of your room. She begins cawing loudly like a crow before disappearing. That's not creepy at all. Falling in and out of sleep, you think you hear growls, perhaps metal on stone. When you finally pry your eyes open, a thief is shaking. You need to leave this place. The villagers are gone, and some of our clansmen are dead. Outside, you see the bodies of the dead positioned in a circle and hear the weeping of a few families. Everyone is on guard as the dead are properly burned and immediately ready to move afterwards. So, this is like, what, Children of the Poor and just Purple Woods Edition, or what are we talking? I really wanted to improve the morale by doing a camp, and you know what? We're gonna actually stop for a camp. We're gonna rest for a day. Or two. It's gonna get us to at least some point, and...
you know what, I feel like I'm gonna cut off the episode here. Yes, it would have been awesome if we would have cleared the damn woods. But, I mean, we fought already. The horseborn uh, and the, the weird looking scavengers or the wild people or what you want to call them. We have some injured heroes, we have some heroes ready to be promoted, we are running low on supplies, we are running low on renown, we have no freaking idea what's going on in here, but yeah, I feel like there's gonna be still a whole lot more cover for the Banner Saga, so if you did enjoy the episode, please consider giving it a like. Also, if you would like to find out more about the channel, link is in the description. I publish content on a weekly base, I do mostly playthroughs, I do tips and tricks, I do discussion videos. I'm planning on doing a whole lot of other stuff eventually, but we will see how things turn out, because pandemic and such. So in the meantime, you stay safe, enjoy yourself, subscribe to the channel, it helps a lot, or give the like. And I will see you in the comments, or at the next one. Thank you for watching everyone, stay safe, and bye bye.